Good evening, councillors, staff. Welcome to our extraordinary council meeting on the 29th of June 2022. So I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight and also to our community that may be listening online. Good evening. I declare the meeting open at 7.02 p.m. Just a reminder that everyone at this meeting is, um, is to conduct themselves in a polite and professional manner, keep communication factual, and use appropriate language and tone, and no defamatory or derogatory remarks. Defamation laws apply to address in public forum. I also ask councillors to observe the requirements under the Code of Meeting Practice and Meeting Etiquette. And I remind all present that the video recording is an official record of council and may be made available to persons upon request in accordance with the Government Information Public Access Act 2009. No other recordings are permitted. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we meet and paying our respect to Elders past and present. Um, and that this meeting takes place on the Gadigal and Bidjigal clans of the Eora Nation. We now move to the opening prayer and I invite the Manager of Governance and Risk, Mr Soot, to open the meeting in prayer. Please be upstanding. Almighty God, we thank you for the community of Bayside and for the benefits of living and working in this diverse area. As we commence this meeting, inspire us with the qualities of good counsel so that the foundations of good governance may be established for Bayside Council. Give us insight to make wise decisions, integrity to face the truth, courage to make difficult choices, and compassion for the needs of others. We ask these in your name. Amen. Thank you, Mr Soot. Okay, we'll now move to apologies and attendance. And uh, we have received an apology from Councillor Sedrak. And we also have three councillors um, who are seeking to attend by audio visual link. And they are Councillors Morrissey, Werner and Douglas. And, and we all hope that you are all feeling much better. And would someone like to move and second that the councillors request to attend by audio visual link be granted, moved, Councillor Fardell, seconded, Councillor McDougall. And we will also move um, the apology for Councillor Sedrak. Someone happy to move, move Councillor Jansen, seconded Councillor McDougall. So all those in favour say aye. aye. Against, declare both those carried. All right, that moves us to disclosures of interest. Does any councillor wish to make any disclosure of interest tonight? Okay, I note there are no disclosures of interest. That takes us to um, number five, and um, this is a Merrill Minute which um, you will find on your table tonight. And um, this Merrill Minute was not published with the original papers because um, we just got some good news on Monday. So I wanted to incorporate that into a broader Merrill Minute. And um, this is a, an amazing achievement from Bayside Council. And this is additional grant funding, which exceeds $30 million for the last two financial years. Granted, it's been exceptional circumstances, but what an amazing effort. And this funding will go to improving community facilities and infrastructure and two grants which were announced, um, which we heard um, back from on Monday, which was a $5 million contribution towards the redevelopment of Barton Park Shop Sporting Precinct and one million for the upgrade of the Scarborough Park Tennis Court facility, which is very exciting. And this is a great outcome for our community and it's something we should um, let our community know about So, um, because it's, it's just wonderful news and it will make a significant difference to our facilities and to deliver on projects that are really important 
for our community. So I'd really like to thank and congratulate the staff. There's a lot of energy, time and effort that goes into grant applications and um, to, to get this result um, really deserves a great deal of kudos. So please pass on our appreciation and thanks for all those efforts. So there's a little bit more detail which breaks down um, there and you can sort of see that it's um, some of the good news there is um, particularly around the local roads and community infrastructure grants. So this is $8 million of Commonwealth funding and, um, and we're anticipating more in the upcoming fourth round. So having access to federal money is a, a real bonus for local communities and particularly council, councillors will recall our, at our meeting last Wednesday, you know, the Merrill Minute about, you know, the threat of developer contributions being taken away. So more than ever, um, we really need to um, have opportunities for money from all levels of government coming in to support um, council who are at the grassroots working with community, delivering on projects that they, that the community access and use and experience. So there's a little bit more, um, so there's a bit more detail. You can see over 50 individual projects and these range from road safety improvements to sport facility upgrades, the Brighton Streets Alive Festival, playgrounds and bridges that are being funded and which we wouldn't have been able to do without these grants. So a, a wonderful achievement. So I move that that Merrill Minute be accepted. Is there any discussion? Councillor Saranowski. Madam Mayor, I, I rise to support your Merrill Minute. I'd acknowledge that um, it restores faith in this council in terms of our applications for grants that would be fairly treated um, compared to what happened in the past in relation to grants that were um, put in particular seats. I want to thank um, the staff for organising the grants, that's good. But I also want to thank the state government. I, I'm ALP, as everybody knows. I must acknowledge <coughs> the state government um, has given us money, which is good. So it's restored faith to me that when we do put applications in, that we're going to be uh, we're going to be fairly treated, and uh, once we not lose the fact that there's a state election occurring next year, that we should put as many projects in the system as possible. So I also want to uh, thank the federal government, and we have now a new government. It's, it will be more sympathetic. That uh, we have a number of projects that, particularly the, I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff, but. The biggest um, concern I've always had was the lack of support or lack of interest from the federal government in terms of the sand erosion on, uh, on our beachfront. Because you may recall the former Prime Minister wrote him a letter asking for financial support. I got this letter, talked about how they spent $3 billion on road constructions in New South Wales. It's a bit unfair for us to bear the burden in relation to sand erosion that was caused as a result of the sort of runway. So I'm heartened to, to read that we've been, we've been successful in achieving um, grants of $30 million. Now I'm not sure whether we could write to the Minister in relation to the State Government and copy in our local members basically thanking them to say, well, we're not, um, we are decent, fair-minded people, that all of our interests at heart is our community. So I was surprised. Yeah, but it restored, restored, reassured, restored my faith in, in the um, in the system that um, projects like the, the Barton Park Sporting Precinct, that's exciting. If one looks at the, what's being proposed by Bay City Council, and I congratulate the former council and the current council for taking on the board this, this, this project, because that at the end of the day is a benefit to our community. And I can tell you that walking around the streets that I do, um, everyone's excited about, about the projects that we have in our system that are going to come to fruition. In the past, we move motions and five years later, nothing happens. But we're actually seeing bricks and mortars being, being delivered. And in terms of the Scarborough Park Tennis Court, I can't remember how, many, how long it's been that we've talked about 
doing this project. It just always been put on the back burner, back burner, back burner. And this is going to come to fruition where our community is actually going to see these facilities with their own two eyes. And as I, said, I, I rise to support your mayoral minute. Thank you, Councillor Saranovsky. Councillor Jansen. Uh, just echoing Councillor Saranovsky in the suggestion to write to federal and state members, the relevant ones, to thank them for this funding. And I think that this would be a terrific communication piece for the community just to um, to echo this Merrill Minute and talk about the projects that have been achieved in um, the two years with this additional funding. And also, finally, to really thank the staff for their grant writing expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jensen. Yeah, we can certainly add those points that um, we'll do some media on it and that we'll also um, write to the relevant um, state and federal members. Okay, uh, thank Councillor you, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, I've been on council since 2004. We've applied for many grants. We've been knocked back on some and we've, you know, we've been granted some. But since Bayside has formed, I must congratulate the staff uh, for their quality and their experience and their ability to get those grants. And I'll concur with Councillor Saranovsky. It doesn't matter whether Labor or Liberal in government. If it was Labor in state government, I would say thank you again. Now, it happens to be Liberal this time. Hopefully, in the future, you never know. Whoever gives the grants to this council to benefit the community, we thank them. Uh, and as far as uh, federal, well, when there's federal grants, the whole country uh, you know, puts applications when their state, the whole state councils uh, apply for grants. So I wouldn't mind that, you know, I know Councillor Saranovsky mentioned the airport uh, and, and the issue with the waterways there, but I'd love to because I think there was a promise once, not the last election, but the previous election, to get some grants of $10 million for the Botany Bay a swimming pool. I'd love to have another crack at it when uh, there's more grants for similar projects and you know because anything that benefits the community I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Naji. And I think what um, you know what's been really good is that Council's clear direction to around you know what are the things that the what that we've sort of the community engagement we've undertaken to understand the needs at, of community and then being able to have these projects already um, there and looking for funding and um, that way because the turnaround is often very quick with those grant applications so there's a so that's um, really great work that staff are, are prepared for these I Councillor just want to Barlow. congratulate the staff as well it's hard work very hard work and I know um, I think Lidham Hall was involved in that with the heritage grant and I know there's got to be more looking for heritage grants for the hall but um, overall it's been fantastic because you wouldn't be anywhere without it so mm -hmm. um, and now that you've got funding for Barton Park if we can move maybe that money somewhere else we just don't know there's plenty of places that need upgrading so and I know we had the million trees so there's a lot of you know and there's you've got to thank the staff for the fact that they keep looking it's just something that it's not no one comes here and knocks on your door and says we'll give you a grant it's the staff have to do that work to find the grants and then put the applications in so you've got to be grateful for that thank you councillor barlow all right um all those in favor say aye, aye. against i declare that carried um, number six is public forum. There are no registered speakers tonight. So that will take us to uh, 7.1, which is the draft delivery program for the next four years, 2022 to 2026, the operational plan and the budget for 22-23 and the resourcing strategy. So I think just um, to um, start with, I think it's important just to um, particularly for those people listening, just to um, go through the background of the process um, in order for us to get to this point in time, which has been quite extensive. And so, 
as councillors will recall at our extraordinary meeting on the 11th of May, we resolved to place the draft delivery program and operational plan and budget and the draft long-term financial plan on public exhibition. And um, prior to that, we also um, developed and workshopped with the councillors. So councillors participated in workshops on the 16th of February, the 16th of March, the 30th of March and the 20th of April. So particularly to ensure councillors had a really good understanding of not only the process but contributing to this along with a number of community consultations too. And they included um, when we did the five mayoral mobile office, uh, the five pop-up offices around the area, one in each ward. Again, another opportunity. There was also the exhibition period on Have Your Say, and that was promoted widely on social media. It was also a topic, um, Talking Bayside Tuesday session on the 24th of May. There were flyers distributed at the Streets Alive event. So there's been lots of opportunity for both residents, um, groups in our community and councillors um, to feed back that information. And so a lot of work's gone into that. So again, I just want to acknowledge um, the work that has gone into the DPOP and also thank the staff for their efforts and also for the, the councillors that um, also provided feedback and input to ensure that our vision is articulated. And, and from my perspective, I'm very pleased to see our increased focus on there is around the customer experience and really bringing that out in the document and also around um, the presentation of Bayside and our parks and gardens. And um, so that's um, really great to see those things really highlighted as a, as a key focus for this term of council, along with a number of other things. So um, I do um, understand that there are some minor changes um, to the officer recommendation. Um, and so is there a mover? Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll move... Um, Mo move Councillor Saranowski. I'll move the I might just... Oh. Um, Councillor Jansen second. Thank you, Councillor Saranowski. Um, I have better also at the moment, so the... My amendment... Um, yeah, I can't see that far. Um, I'll move the recommendations <coughs> one and three to eight, as per the report, with an amended recommendation two and sub-motion nine. In relation to number two, um, the council adopts the delivery program 2022-26 and the operation plan and budget 2022-23 as attachment one to the report. When the exhibited draft delivery program 2022-2026 and operation plan and budget 2022 and 23 and the amendments as detailed in the report and updates include the new, the new be below. Now in relation to nine, um, what it is is just terminology and what it is is that um, the general manager will be delegated to make minor editorial updates in the final published version of delivery program 2020-22-6 six and operation plan 22-23 which have been provided to the general manager by councillors prior to the meeting in addition to changes set out in the table below. Those that can read it, um, some modifications, fine tuning in relation to um, three items and the um, the proposed change in page oh, page 56. Hmm? I can't read that far. My God. Oh, come. oh, yeah, I've I got, I got to start wearing glasses. Now, basically, in terms of page 56, what, the, what we're trying to do is in line with Councillor Bullough's motion in relation to adopt a tree. The idea is to encourage um, tree... Um, cannot be accessed to local government and tree planting. In my street, I've actually got two trees outside my house. Um, and page 56 again, uh, clean tree delivery program. It's, um, the changes is to involve the community in the preservation of natural areas. Uh, page 94, which is in relation to revenue policy, that relates to the community grant. So we're just fine tuning the definitions of it. Of, um, on it. And while I'm on my feet, I just want to thank the staff 
uh, from the general manager down for the effort that they've put into this delivery program. It sends a message to our community where we're going, what path we're taking, and also um, thank the community for taking the time out. We're at the, the plaza. Um, um, whilst we didn't have great numbers, but it was more the fact that the Bayside Council was actually going out and talking to the community. And via Facebook and social media, the other people that couldn't make it could see that we were fed income about doing community consultation. So I urge the councillors to adopt the, uh, the amendments as I've been proposed. All right, so we're going to move it as one entity. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, look, uh, I must congratulate the staff. Just saying the words, uh, you know, congratulation is en enough. Uh, I think it's a great department by the City of Performance, and not only that department, but the whole council involved in that draft of delivery. Now, we know, I know we're prudent. Uh, to this and, and congratulations a magnificent budget uh, staying the course but let's let's not forget that we're going to be mindful about the shortfall that this council is facing and that every year we need as councillors with the department with 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 the uh, uh, director of city performance to make sure that we meet our deliveries and deliver to the community. Just in hindsight, we need to just be mindful of the shortfall, and the community should know this, but us councillors, we're doing our best, and thank you again to the staff. They're doing a magnificent job, and I'll tell you what, uh, on a humorous note, if I was still in the corporate business, I would not hesitate to employ any of uh, members of that department. Well done, and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, yes, my congratulations as well. These are very, very comprehensive and well thought out documents. So congratulations to the staff. And following on from what Councillor Naji has mentioned, we need to bear in mind that there continues to be, from what I can see, a very significant structural flaw in the system. Uh, and, th and we need to keep the pressure on particularly with our unions, with the local government association, we need to get a very well-crafted notice of motion. Because until we can address this structural shortfall where we are not allowed to spend developer contributions to maintain the very assets that arise out of those contributions, we are gonna face very significant shortfalls on maintaining and renewing those assets. So, the grants and everything are absolutely <coughs> wonderful. And it's fantastic to be able to build new facilities from grants and developer contributions. But while ever we have that extremely significant financial and structural flaw in the system, like many other councils, we are going to come to the point where we're gonna fall off the edge of a cliff <coughs> And I remember reading an article a few years ago, I think it was in the Sydney Morning Herald, and that article was talking about the amount of developer contributions that councils were sitting on, and it ran into the billions. And one of the reasons was because there was a reluctance to create the new asset because of the cost associated with maintaining it and renewing it. So all this stuff's fantastic, but we really have to fix that problem. It's a very, very significant problem. And it's something that can be addressed by convincing the government 
that a certain portion of those developer contributions need to be quarantined, we really need to develop what I regard as a future fund. And the future fund is out of those developer contributions because otherwise we'll be building assets when it comes time to renew them and maintain them, we won't have the money to do it. And it's a very, very sobering forecast in these documents, prepared, I'm pretty sure, by the consultant, I just can't turn it up at the moment, but the pessimistic forecast is the forecast that we should be looking at. And that's the one that we need to overturn. We need to get on top of that. Congratulations, more than happy with this, but we've got to fix that problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Hannah. Good points. Is there any further discussion? Excuse me, um, <coughs> yes. I was wondering if I could, yeah, certainly, thank you. Certainly, Councillor Werner. <coughs> Thanks very much. I just wanted to say something to follow on from what Councillor Hannah and Councillor Naji have just said. Um, and this, um, I think, in some small way, we might be able to address some of the uh, asset maintenance uh, gap that we have uh, in the fees and charges. And um, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to the fees and charges uh, document. And on page 84, um, it's, it talks about uh, charges for fields. Um, and I noticed that the charges for home club fees uh, for synthetic fields are $10.80 an hour. And yet for local sporting and community hire, it's $55 an hour. And um, seeing as the local sports clubs, um, it, even if, you know, if they're not home clubs, uh, the local sports clubs are also local ratepayers. So um, I was thinking that, uh, you know, I mean, someone, someone might be able to tell me this, uh, why those local sporting clubs should pay more <clears throat> than the home clubs or why the home clubs aren't um, paying as much as, as the other local sporting clubs. Um, and just while I'm, while I'm speaking, I also wanted to talk about the lighting fees because I noticed that the um, Hensley uh, lighting is $46.50 um, and uh, is that per hour? Yeah, I think it's per hour. Yeah, $46.50 an hour. And yet for synthetic fields, and these are the same kinds of lights, um, it's $10.80. So, yeah, I was just wondering maybe through the chair if the, if the relevant um, um, <clears throat> officer could let us know whether, whether that um, $10.80, whether that actually covers the cost of the lighting and then... Um, uh, yeah, while, while we've got that discrepancy between the two different uh, lighting charges. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Werner. I'll refer to the General Manager. Um, through the Mayor, some of the discrepancies that Councillor Werner has highlighted um, actually go back a little bit in history and relate to the type of hiring that applies to certain fields. So where we are talking about a grassroots local community organisation, council has in the past made the decision to minimise the fees that those fields attract. Whereas with Hensley being um, one of our premier fields that does attract um, a very high fee paying, large club, commercial type operations, the fee is of a different calibre. Um, it's quite, we have um, looked at some of these in the past when we were, um, when we had a sport and rec committee. We now have um, the services committee and can I suggest that if you want to look at the fine grain detail and the principles underpinning the different charges, then we'd be happy to bring further information to that so that you could um, look at whether or not you still agree with the principles that these fees have been built on. Thank you, General Manager. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Werner. Is there any further discussion? 
All right, there's no further discussion. So I've moved by Councillor Saranowski, seconded by, by <coughs> Councillor Jansen. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against. aye. I declare it carried. Thank you, councillors. Um, that takes us, there are no other items on the agenda tonight. So um, I declare the meeting closed, um, probably our quickest ever